Hey class, it's uh, Nick Sensky again, uh, UNC Charlotte, and uh, starting up where the uh, last Rhino tutorial uh, ended with our AutoCAD file uh, imported into Rhino and ready to be turned into uh, a scaffold so that we can uh, start 3D modeling. Okay, so this is going to both teach you this what we call the scaffolding uh, method of going from a two-dimensional orthographic drawing to a three-dimensional uh, solid Rhino model. Uh, and also a, a, a tutorial into the uh, Rhino modeling process. Okay, uh, so uh, to begin, I just actually I kind of want to take a back track here, and I want to talk about uh, how modeling in Rhino uh, works. Um, a lot of 3D modeling, a lot of like 3D ideas uh, are basically what we call two and a half D, and it's this idea that if you have some kind of a uh, of a uh, shape. And uh, it could really be, you know, anything uh, that you drew as uh, as something in a plan. Let me just quickly make a, make an object here. Uh, so we'd be looking at these things in in, in a uh, in a plan view, or even in an elevation or a section, right? Um, so the idea that if we extrude them, to so use the extrude curve uh, command with uh, solid turned on, so that it caps it. Uh, if you extrude something from a 2D drawing, again, extrude, that you would actually get uh, a 3D solid of that object. Okay. And of course, the extrusion of the, of the piece is dependent upon another drawing, like a section or an elevation or something, right? It's because you need to know how thick it is, how, how tall it is how deep it goes, uh, so you need that additional uh, variable in there, but, um, you know, it's it's really a lot of architecture, a lot of things are just simply um, extrusions of a two-dimensional drawing. Um, sometimes things get more complicated than that, but that is definitely um, a big a big part of it. Um, the other kind of thing that we, we can do is, uh, I showed this in class, is this idea, and this is just a reminder of how difficult it is to actually draw uh, in 3D sometimes, but if we have two solids that are interlocked, we can do things like uh, a Boolean difference. So I select one, press enter, select the second one, press enter, and that will remove that, that piece. Note that this is a destructive operation, like I lose the, uh, the piece I used, okay? Uh, and I lose the original piece that I made this out of. But the new form is, is, the, is the difference between those two forms. Um, so between those, those two operations, you know, you can actually do quite a bit of basic uh, modeling in, um, in Rhinoceros. The other kind of operation uh, that we have is, uh, is called a loft. And this is, it basically involves taking two uh, curves or lines and I'm going to just move these up. And you'll note that, you know, when I want to move things in different axes, I will quickly change the view. So I went from a top view, or actually I went from a uh, perspective view uh, to a uh, side view, like a front or a right view. And note you can change view just by typing in the uh, viewport, which is really handy. So type front, and I move that up to the front. In fact, let's go ahead and exercise our multiple viewport. But to do a loft, I can say loft, select the curves one by one. It's very important to loft it, to select them in the right order. So I choose this one and then that one. And if I had more, you can loft an infinite number of curves. Um, but uh, if you don't if you don't choose them in order yourself, the computer has to interpret what that order is, and a lot of times uh, it makes mistakes. Once I've done my loft here, I press enter, and this kind of shows me what direction the computer uh, thinks the seam should go. And uh, there's different kinds of lofts here. Um, I'm going to do a normal loft. And if I look at it shaded, I can kind of see that there's sort of a morph between the one thing and the other. Um, this brings up another interesting thing here is the fact that, like, you know, this is a solid. It says closed polysurface. If I go to details, it says closed solid. That's the most beautiful word in the English language if you're trying to digitally fabricate uh, objects with a 3D printer uh, because you need a watertight solid in order to uh, have it be fabricated. You can't have any openings in it. Um, closed extrusion. Um, 
see here. Closed. Seems okay. Um, yeah, so that would probably be a solid as well. Uh, but if you look at this, it is an open uh, surface, so that is not going to work. So how do you close it? Well, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, easiest way is if the geometry allows it, you can cap it. Just say CAP, cap, and it'll cap it, and it should say closed poly surface. And now it's a closed solid. It only works if it's a really simple uh, form that has very obvious places uh, for it to be closed. Um, another uh, thing that you can do, let's just take a look at, let's take a box here. And I could like explode. Ah. <laughs> explode the box. And explode just changes the, the solid into surfaces. And this is a really important idea. It's this idea that like nothing in the computer is actually solid. It's actually just surfaces that are pointed towards us. The inside of it doesn't actually have uh, it doesn't have any stuff on the inside. It's just these six surfaces in this case that are oriented um, away from us. And so if I am looking at this and I join these together, you can say it's open, right? It's like a cardboard box. Besides capping it, if I can complete that surface through creating other surfaces, for example, I can use a surface tool here and some snaps. It doesn't like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm in the wrong viewport. Let's see so if I just draw the front view. Let's see if I got that right. It's very hard to tell sometimes. Ah, yeah. So if I take these and I join them, now it's closed again. Like, I've, I've fixed it. It's actually a uh, solid. And you can tell it's a solid because it says that. And its solids are also very important because you can't boolean anything uh, and output a solid unless you're booleaning with two solids. To prove the point, I'll go ahead and make a uh, sphere, which is a closed surface. It's a solid. It's valid. It's closed. If I boolean this surface from this surface, you can see that I, the edge is the edge is complete. It's actually, and it's then the output is a solid, closed solid. Very good. It's, that's what we want. Um, if my box is not a solid, first of all. Uh, It's only going to be able to boolean the one thing. Um, but if I if I take all these, let's say, and I join them back together again, and I try to boolean them from this, it just pretty much doesn't work because it wants a solid and a solid. There are ways of 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 booleaning. Basically, you have to have either two open forms or two closed forms for a boolean to work. Okay, and since we want to do these watertight solids uh, to do digital fabrication, uh, to make these cut sheets, um, that's important to us. We want to make sure that our, our, our surfaces are closed uh, so that they're solids. Um, so let's take a look at this. So if I, have, if I have this piece here, you can also do, you can draw a line in a, in a view, and you can do a trim. So I look at this, I can actually trim this thing in 3D. So I'm actually projecting that line from that view. So it's kind of a Boolean. But you can see what ends up happening with that a lot of times is that it actually leaves a, uh, this isn't a solid anymore. It's been trimmed, uh, but I don't have, I don't have that solid anymore. But if I did something like, um, this, and I extruded it, oops, I didn't join them together, you gotta be careful about that, now it's one surface, or one curve, excuse me, if I extrude it, I can make a solid out of it, and uh, then if I move it, again, I'm changing the view so I can arrange it properly, if I boolean, this thing, oops, 
do that again. This thing, from this thing, it's going to give me that edge I want. And that is a closed uh, poly surface. Okay. So it's, a, so it's really important when we're trying to make these molds and when we're trying to make more complicated forms to really be dealing uh, in, in terms of solids. Okay. Um, so there's sort of a hierarchy to the whole system here. Uh, we'll talk about this more later, but there's sort of like this topographical uh, hierarchy. You have uh, points, right? And if I have two points, then I have uh, a line, right? A line is defined by two points. Okay. If I extrude a line, I get a surface. The key idea about the extrude tool is that it takes the last orthographic plane as the plane of extrusion, which is why if I was if I'm in top view and then I go to perspective view to extrude it, it extrudes up into that plane. If I was in a front view, and then I go to perspective view and I extrude it, it will extrude it into that front view plane. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty important. Let's do that anyway. So it points to lines, lines extruded to planes. If I extrude, a plane, the plane, and actually I want to do extrude surface here, now it's not extrude curve, but extrude surface, I get, a, I get, and actually I didn't, uh, I need to change the settings here, I want to do solid, yes, then I get a solid, and if I have a solid, right, I can explode it into surfaces. If I take a surface, I can uh, get the edges. So I can say duplicate uh, border that gives me the edge. If I explode the edge, I get the curves or the lines it's made out of. And if I have the uh, line, uh, I can get the points that are on the end of that line. So there's a topological hierarchy here. Points to lines to planes to solids, solids to surfaces to lines to points. And it's important to understand this because you can always use these objects, you know, from, from one level of the hierarchy to another to build or to generate the, um, the objects that you need. Okay? The precision modeling... That kind of thing is really important.